Hello oh, my astrology family, this is Lada from astrolada.com. This is the most important and exciting month of the year, not just personally, but for the world, because the two planets, the two probably most intense planets, Saturn and Pluto, are changing signs in March. So there will be big world important events that you'll notice around March, maybe a little bit before, a little bit after. But on a personal level, this will be a game changer. Many new beginnings in your life. Old problems will disappear and new exciting territories and problems will appear. <laughs> Let's see what it's going to be like. I'll speak about each of the 12 signs. Uh, you come back to this video for many years, at least for the next three years, because I'll speak about how Saturn will influence you for the next three years. And pluto for the next 20 years so please save this video to favorites because you will need it when you, when things start happening this will explain to you and give you perspective so you don't feel overwhelmed or so you so you feel like wow i'm i'm on time like a deja vu this is exactly what i'm supposed to be doing so this is an important video and before i start please do check your start with your ascendant if you know your time of birth start with your rising sign also known as ascendant if you don't know it start with your sun sign and moon sign if you can but the ascendant is the most important i think if your time of birth is correct and then i'll follow if you are day born the sun um, check the three if you want but always for me the ascendant is it um, and by the way before we start just to let you know i'm doing a big webinar on pluto in aquarius that will be at the end of february the start of march it's only 39 dollars it will be five hours and i'll walk you through how pluto will affect you personally because pluto will be in aquarius for the next 20 years and i'll show you how and you'll be able to see what areas pluto will influence say pluto will square your mars natal mars in 2036 what does it mean or oh, pluto will enter your second house and it will transit the second house cusp in 2025 what does it mean for you or oh, pluto will try your venus what does it mean for your life for your love life and which year so that will be a very personal uh, webinar uh, but because i'll show you how you can calculate it and see it very easy but at the same time very insightful for you to plan because pluto is the planet of the evolution of the soul and uh, if your all the, the most important changes on a spiritual and material level always happen uh, through pluto so let's enjoy the videos libra sun moon arising march 2023 but this video as i said will be <laughs> valid for the next uh, three years for saturn interpretations and the next 20 years for the pluto interpretation so you can save it in favorites to come back to it the first important astrological event on the 7th of march is that saturn is moving from your fifth house where it spent the last two and a half years actually since april 2020 uh, it's moving into your sixth house. And if you want to see how you fared with the lessons of Saturn in the fifth house, you can check the video for the next sign, Scorpio, where I speak about what Saturn in the fifth house brings. And you can listen to it, understanding that you've already passed that. And if you learn those lessons and how did you, and what was the evolutionary purpose of the experiences that you had with this transit. So, to put things into perspective but it's known that saturn in the fifth house is a bit difficult position because this is one of the houses of life force so sometimes saturn when it's in the fifth house can pinch the life force of a person and to be less energetic and so on but it had its evolutionary purpose and goals you can hear that in the video for scorpio to figure out how you how you fulfill this evolutionary purpose but saturn is moving out of this house so it can feel like a relief for many of you libras and uh, especially to make you feel a bit more spontaneous happier overall because this is the fifth house has been the house of enjoyment of life and saturn might have suppressed that or made it more regimented more structured any kind of entertainments and pleasures might have to be more organized or less easier to access and this life force uh, that naturally flows through us of creativity of spontaneity of um, 
confidence has been restricted, but Saturn is ending its move through the fifth house and moves on the 7th of March into your sixth house using whole sign house system. Of course, we can use another for those videos. And what will be the prerogatives and the most important lessons for the next two and a half, three years till 2025? Well, um, the sixth house is the house of order. And Saturn is a planet of order. So Saturn can feel quite comfortable there. And it can do some really good work. And actually, it's a very material, physical house. Uh, so it, it's, there'll be a lot of focus starting from March onwards on matters of organizing your everyday life and matters in regarding your career and work that Saturn would like to structureize to make more efficient more organized uh, to prioritize as activities and sometimes people notice when Saturn enters their sixth house that they have a lot more work than normal or a lot even if they're not uh, employed they might find themselves that their daily routines are becoming or daily errands that they have to run um, can become a lot more. Sometimes people can even turn a bit workaholic when Saturn is in the sixth house because they're giving priority to dealing with the material realities around and uh, to work, to duties, to responsibilities. I've seen even stay-at-home moms that they say that their responsibilities become a bit too much <laughs> when Saturn is in the sixth house. But they also say that during that period, they learn to organize their routines much more efficiently. So if you're someone who is already employed, you can notice yourself that uh, you're realizing that working hard, sometimes it's instead of working hard only, you have to learn work smart. So that can be a period during which you make your work processes more efficient, organize your business or your workplace more efficiently. So you do half as much work, but get uh, half as much time working, but get twice as much done, so to speak. Maybe automate something or, you know, such kind of things can be happening over the next two, three years. On another level, it can indicate that um, uh, especially if um, because, you know, for the last 12 years, Neptune has been in your sixth house since 2012. And I don't have Nep Neptune here, but just imagine since 2012, Neptune's been transiting your sixth house of daily routines, organization, uh, healthy habits. And Neptune can make a mess out of things because the sixth house is very material house where you need to be on top of things. You need to keep schedules, be organized. Well, with Neptune there, maybe in the last 12 years, maybe not all the time, for some of you more recent years, depends if you're later born, Libras or early born, but maybe there was a bit more chaos in your everyday routines. Maybe it was harder for you to keep a strict plan, organization, like wake up at the same time, go to work, uh, do your exercises, you know, like eat healthy and so on. I'm not saying that all oh, liberals couldn't do that. Of course, that's ridiculous. But maybe Neptune was dissolving those efforts or making you not be as, let's say, disciplined. Well, Saturn is coming to fix the mess that Neptune left. <laughs> and Neptune in the twelfth, uh, in the sixth house, can sometimes even incline people to more bohemian lifestyle habits, daily habits, maybe like uh, self-medicating, using substances and so on. Uh, and even escaping responsibility to some extent and being less organized than normal in their life. Well, Neptune now, Saturn now comes and for the next two, three years says, I'm gonna fix that mess. Um, uh, so you will feel an inner impulse or an outer compulsion, some circumstances might compulse you to get yourself in order, to organize yourself, to become more on top of your health habits, to become more on top of your work, to become more responsible with your duties and responsibilities. And um, to be, become more organized, even to have your house cleaner or your space around you more uh, arranged. And actually, uh, if you speak with a few Virgos or Virgo rising people, if you know, because they just went through Saturn in their sixth house. Uh, I've been speaking like I went the other day to the hairdresser and um, I'm like, wow, you've lost a lot of weight. And she says, well, yeah, she says, I don't know what happened, but suddenly I'm working out six times per week, five times. I'm lifting weights 
and it happened just so naturally at first it was hard but now I, I think I'll keep it for life and I said are you Virgo and she said no I'm Virgo rising so I know that uh, a lot of Virgos went through like my sister-in-law had Saturn in her sixth house and she stopped drinking she started working out so this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to really organize yourself with those uh, habits and routines that help you maintain your body and help you be more efficient more organized in your everyday life so healthier habits uh, with your body healthier habits and uh, routines with your work but coming back to work sometimes when Saturn transits your sixth house if you're in the it can make you work very hard for periods of times especially if you're in the right field of career you would have more responsibilities more duties uh, you would kind of maybe focus for a long time on uh, for those two three years on work hard <laughs> you know so you can I don't know fulfill certain material uh, goals of yours is it for money or is it just you know to reach certain position uh, but if you're not in the right field you might find yourself that you get more disappointed with your career maybe the circumstances that your work become more limited or more there's more pressure on you like my sister-in-law it was a nurse at and transiting her sixth house uh COVID happened and she said like they were overwhelmed with work so she had to learn to be more organized and so on and had to work extra hours than other times and so I'm not saying this will happen the same way for you, but in, you know, translate it to your life in some different way. Um, and so, but you will, if you're not in the right line of work, you'd start noticing that you're either dissatisfied with the work you do, the circumstances will become less in your work environment, more hostile or more, um, let's say, more demanding, less grateful. And that can be a push for you to change your workplace or to change the direction to rethink your career even stop for a little bit to work and slow down and rethink during that period what is the right direction which field should they go in or maybe different company or if you have your own business maybe you have to change your um, I don't know kind of the administrative structure and so on the process of working around you so these will be topics that will be occupying you for the next two three years uh, but as i said great opportunity to change your health habits and by the way if you're sometimes saturn can push you in that direction because you notice more serious health effects because saturn can trigger some especially more chronic health condition and it can make a certain situation especially health or mental or physical health situation unbearable to the level that you really stop a certain bad habit or change your eating habits or start working out something on those lines expect um, so that uh, that's that's the good thing you know and Saturn is a hard worker six house is the house of hard work so you you would not be afraid of that let's say <laughs> for the next two three years um, you can become very serious or find what kind of job you do you can set for some people if they have their own business might be like maybe be making it a bit smaller but more efficient um, you know these are the lines of Saturn wants to streamline to make more elegant the process of work um, and to make more mm, I don't know uh, to simplify it you know and uh, on the field of health again sometimes you people I've seen people get obsessed with health when Saturn is in the sixth house but if you're in any sixth house careers like if you're in health industry social care services military police or medical services or healing of any sort mm, they, they your workload can increase and you can be given with more seniority and more authority uh, you can be given more responsibilities there of any sorts but for everyone i think saturn in the sixth house is very well you know focused it's very material for the next two three years um you become more organized habits routines and so on and that's very important for longevity for health overall and for happiness in the long term <laughs> um, all right so another important event is that pluto is moving into your it's moving out on March 23rd from your fourth house of family 
where it's been for the last 14 years so maybe big huge transformations happen for Libra especially Libra rising on the family front some settled some divorced some got married some had children <laughs> type of things you know the personal life like my husband is Libra rising when Pluto was right on his fourth house cusp baby one baby two <laughs> new house mother-in-law living with us a big family changes well now it's moving out of there and if you want to hear what Pluto in the fourth house has been doing for the last 14 years and the evolutionary uh, lessons that you learned and that you've been through and the purpose of all those events that happened for you watch the next sign video watch Scorpio where I speak about Pluto in the fourth house and what they can expect but you listen to it as something that you've already been going through and that yourself has evolved through um, so but you know but Pluto will be changing signs it will stay in Aquarius just for a couple of months till June but because it's its first ingress usually it's into the sign it uh, indicates some important events that start happening like a symbolic event that will show you the direction for the next 20 years because Pluto will be in Aquarius till 2044 and why is Pluto so important even though everyone says it's not even a planet <laughs> you can't see it <laughs> well astrologists have been testing and seeing that and psychics as well uh, that Pluto is the evolutionary goal of the soul the evolution the evolution of the soul as the last planet in our solar system and that it's even though it's invisible it's mighty mighty planet and actually past life regressions always indicate that the position of Pluto corresponds to past lifetime so the evolution of the soul so that's why it's so important so all other events that will be happening in your life for the next 20 years whether it's like whatever Saturn goes Jupiter getting you know jobs changing uh, people being born dying moving to different places to live they all will serve the primary evolution the primary evolutionary goal of Pluto in your fifth house for the next 20 years because they kind of filter through all the influences that's happening all the events in your life always go to serve the evolution of the soul which Pluto indicates what you'll be evolving in yourself for the next 20 years through all types of events that happen in your life and Pluto just dips its toe for two months then comes back to Capricorn till the end so your fourth house till the end of 2023 and then comes back again into your fifth house to stay there for many many years so what will be the lessons first of all Pluto will empower Libras tremendously over the next 20 years it might not happen overnight it's a very long psychological process uh, it takes about you know exactly about two years for the exact aspect of Pluto so if you're early degree Libras you know the first one two degrees for the next two years this deep transformation will happen if you're later degrees Libra it will happen maybe in 15 or you know depends how late degree Libra you are Sun Moon or Ascendant that this empowerment this amazing empowerment will happen for you in a non-crisis way though with Pluto because it's a trine big life change but that makes you transform your psychology to feel more powerful to feel more uh, wholesome so to speak and to be on the right path but to know exactly which year it will happen for you maybe you can attend my webinar Pluto in Aquarius that will be at the end of February the start of March and it, it will show you exactly the degrees year by year so you'll know exactly when it will happen for you and what will happen because I'll speak about the different aspects maybe to other planets in your horoscope and so on but Pluto in the fifth house the evolutionary goal is that this is one of the uh, self houses so it will be about exploration of the self it will be about passionate deep diving into your natural talents and maybe for some of you even if you're in your 70s when Pluto enters your fifth house you might discover talents that you are not aware of you might discover uh, natural passions and interests and inclinations that maybe that you awaken from past lifetimes because Pluto is a little bit about digging out from <laughs> from the past lifetimes that you naturally manifest in this lifetime and you can turn them into a pivotal focus even into a career and it will be about exploring your passions it will be exploring what you are naturally good at and maybe some of you might develop hobbies or fascinating activities 
that you get lost on for hours and hours and months. <laughs> this is the house of hobbies, so to speak. I, I don't think these are just hobbies that you waste time with, like watching TV. Like some people say, oh, that's my hobby. No, this is something that you pour your soul into as well. This is something that you actively participate in co-creating. So these are something that you creatively involved with. So you might discover an incredible creative talent, I don't know, for theater or for um, stock markets or for public speaking, you know. Uh, and it oft also, whatever this talent is, you can transform society through it over the next 20 years. You can impact society in a big way. Pluto in Aquarius will be changing the whole of society in such a huge way that hasn't happened since the French Revolution and hasn't happened since the American Revolution. Um, so <laughs> imagine uh, everyone will have to contribute in some way and you as liberals will contribute through your children maybe because fifth house rules your children that can you can empower your children in some way you can become obsessed with taking your children to maybe even a bit interfering helicopter mom or that but uh, your children can change in a huge way for the next 20 years or, but you can also impact the world through um, your own creative inputs and you can something like a hobby some invention the eighth house is the most inventive creative house something that is your own art um, something that you have knowledge about that you're talented about so you're kind of blessed because the things that you really love to do you're natural at you can transform the world through them um, and if you're already in some industry that is like entertainment, like creative, uh, you might become famous and you can, or you can have a big impact <laughs> with your work over the next 20 years. And, but, you, or if you, you know, it doesn't mean every liberal will become famous, of course, <laughs> but it can mean that you discover something that empowers you. You discover some fun or some really life enhancing activities. Um, that you unfold and many new passions that you explore and speaking about passions fifth house is also about the love life of a person and you deep dive to explore love for many of you uh, even if you're later age Pluto will reverse maybe maybe you haven't been in a relationship for a while Pluto enters your fifth house when it, especially when it transits the fifth house cusp of the same degree from your ascendant sun or moon uh, that's when it can happen but again for this you need to know your degree and which your Pluto will be there exactly but that can be like a transformational romantic relationship that wow that you kind of changes you so much and there might be some romantic relationships some in more extreme cases that really presses your buttons there is some some kind of a soul connection there or something that is a bit more hidden that is a bit oh. <laughs> my husband let's see <laughs> i watch him closely um that um, but the thing is that the, the evolution of the soul can come to you through a love romantic relationship and sometimes they're not easy lessons sometimes can be a romantic relationships that involves you know extreme experiences of any sorts <laughs> and exploring the boot topics and topics of abuse and topics of uh betrayal but on the higher scale it can also because it's very long many years transit it can indicate really attracting a soulmate very deeply sexual sexually healing relationships of some sort or experience as well and if you're already married it can make you transform i'm just saying this for my personal <laughs> <laughs> calming of the mind <laughs> makes you transform your romantic life and because you become very focused on those experiences of uh, pleasure entertainment even uh, the the act of sex as enjoyment is the fifth house uh, it can indicate some big transformation there or some big lessons to learn <laughs> and some big change that you're willing to do to change this uh the situation then especially since saturn was in your fifth house for a few years maybe it's a bit of a desert day in the romantic sphere and now you passionately dive in to explore those this area of your life and again as may it's also hobbies and passions and so on on another level i spoke about children but it's also one of the houses of pregnancy some people might even have pregnancies well it's a 20-year period of course but exactly when pluto transits 
because Pluto is a fertile planet and even if you're someone who weren't able to be fertile Pluto can trigger this for you of course it's also children there can be some power struggles with children depends what transits Pluto is making uh, aspect from your fifth house if it's making if you have a lot of planets in Taurus or Leo or Scorpio there might be kind of clashes or some more crisis situations happening with your children or in your romantic love life through the more extremes manifestations of Pluto of course will find this out through my webinar if your Pluto is making any aspects and through that fifth house and what it will mean for you but if it's uh, making good aspects very empowering romantic relationships very uh, empowering close bonds with children uh, children can be the transformative force in your life um, and if it's hard aspects as I said some power clashes there can happen some more crisis situation that you have to overcome in some way but again they will transform you because this is one of the self houses they would uh, transform your self-expression and it's, if you've been someone who is afraid or who is more like a shy person, Pluto Day in the fifth house can push your boundaries to put yourself out in, uh, in the center of things. If you've been trying to be at the, you know, trying to avoid center stage positions, Pluto can make you, can push you to transform all of that and to change that. It's a long process, but, you know, it's interesting to see what will happen and actually if you want to find out more about Pluto in the fifth house which is empowering in aspect to Aquarius uh, to Libra it's gonna be very helpful as well if there is Libra's uh, I mean Sun Libra Sun whatever it can empower your career and really make some tremendous positive developments there for the next 20 years uh, if it's your ascendant uh, then even your physical body and health can be empowered and your role in society if it's your moon your home and personal life if it's your moon in Libra your home or personal life you know and so on but you can find out more about that with my video on uh, 2023 for Libra which is two and a half three hours and I speak way more in depth about Saturn and Pluto in your fifth and your sixth house and all the other influences this year. And then uh, specifically this month, definitely the sun is also going to be in the sixth house. So it's only short influence, but there, there is focus of possibility of renewal in regards to uh, work, exercise, new developments there, positive, powerful, uh, important developments with your health, with your work. Uh, that you can start of any sort and Jupiter and Venus at the very start of the month meet together in your seventh house so for some of you Libras these are the two benefics these are two planets that give things with ease wonderfully easy for some of you that are single you can meet someone R that is relationship material that is like good karma for you for others, it can mean that you have some positive experiences in March with your partner, that your partner is on a roll, so to speak, that your partner experiences some positive uh, events in their life, or maybe something new is introduced to you through another person, thanks to this positive, great conjunction in your seventh house of other people. So if, if someone reach out to you for collaboration or with an idea, be open to it because something good and like a blessing is coming to you from others. Or maybe you reach out to another to ask for help. Maybe you ask the advice of a consultant, you ask the advice of a professional to help you with something. You'd find the right lawyer or you'd find the right someone to help you buy or sell property. So combine with others, collaborate with another, ask for counseling or advice and you can have great results in some way that's what Jupiter and Venus are helping you with in March and the last but not least is that Mars is finally going to leave your ninth house it's been there since April sorry since August 2020 it went retrograde for a little bit um, so any kind of and it's there the whole month but it leaves towards the end of the month so if there's been any complications or stresses with legal matters, with papers and documents, or with anything to do with legalizing foreign residents or whatever, any problems like that just fall off. They disappear, they're resolved. If there was any problems to do with higher education, with foreign travel, 
with anything to do with um, faraway places. These things also go away, they're solved. And at the end of the month, Mars will move into your 10th house. So you'll be much more focused on career matters and your actions will be uh, more like impactful. Bam, bam, bam. You'll be getting things done more. Uh, but I think Mars was very helpful for Libra. I probably hopefully didn't do much damage <laughs> over the last six months, but it's now moving that area of your life. So thank you so much, Libras. And have a very insightful March 2023 because usually when a planet changes sign from the beginning you're given some clues about what's to happen for the years this planet will stay in that sign thank you